Welcome fellow painters and decorators of the interweb. This is Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. Um, first things first, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. There's a number of you that are pressing that give thanks button now, which is brilliant. Much appreciated. I can't thank you enough for that. That said, let's move on. No, thank you very much to those people. Um, you've seen the thumbnail. As I keep telling everybody, I'm not sponsored. I'm still waiting for that phone call from Porsche to say we're going to let you have a car for 12 months, see what you think. That's not going to happen, is it? And you've probably seen the videos where I'm talking about how much money I've earned off YouTube over the last 12 months, one month, six months, 12 months. Yeah, I don't know why I bother. Seriously, I don't know why I bother. But anyway, um, I'm not sponsored, but I do get... <coughs> A few samples of bits and pieces sent to me which is really much appreciated because it's nice to see new stuff that's coming through in the trade, new brushes, new um, paints and things that I've not actually had chance to use or try. Now again it's nice to network at the painting and decorating show and catch up with people and see people and also blag a few uh, free products. These weren't free products as in blagged, but I've got other stuff that's in my workshop that I do get bits of samples and we'll come on to them probably later in the year or um, in videos to come. But this time, we're back on these gnaw brushes. If you've watched the video, I don't know when you're watching it, but I've done a previous video on another gnaw brush, which I thought was pretty nice. Did me any criticism wasn't, I didn't like the handle. Now, I'm moving forward, I've got some of these brushes, still Gnaw, if you don't, if you don't know who Gnaw are for brushes, they're a, a manufacturer of brushes and rollers, North America, and they're big over there, but not so much over in the UK. Now, Gnaw brushes, this is a brilliant, this is the brilliant finish brush. Now, these are classed as entry level brushes, but I'll tell you whether they're entry level or not, when I get Doris the door coated up with some, um, well, some of my paint. The paint I'm going to use, I'm going to use Bedek MSP. Um, I've got Doris the Door that was painted up in Helmy, oh, sorry, it wasn't Helmy 30, it was Helmy Undercoat a number of weeks ago, and I did say on those videos that it's my good base for doing future videos. This is one of the future videos. Not, well, in the future video, not a few, yeah, yeah, right, whatever. So these are classed as an entry level brush. Now we've got a short handled version and a long handled version. One's a slash cut and one's a traditional, straightforward, ordinary. I call it an ordinary brush. Now, filament wise, bristles, first initial feel, thought, smell nice, smell clean, synthetic obviously. Right, this is a two inch, 50 mil. This is, if you, let's get back to the handles. That's the sort of handle I'd have liked on the, the Heritage brush that I tried previously. That was a varnished handle and I didn't like that. That was the, well, I didn't like it. I liked the brush, just didn't like the handle. These are the drier handles. I prefer that as a handle. It's also got a little hook. So if it's entry level and you're an amateur or a DIY and you've got hooks in your garage, workshop to hook them up, you can hook them up, can't you? Dear me, flipping a chosen specialised subject, the bleeding obvious. Oh, mastermind. I'm king of mastermind. Right, so we've got standard and we've got the slash cut. And you're going to go, what's slash cut for, Phil? Well, slash cut are really nice for cutting in on skirting boards, downside of door frames, cutting around window mouldings, even cutting in, if you're using it for emulsion, cutting in um, your ceiling edge wall edges so that's probably self-explanatory but what I'm going to do like the previous video I used a two inch on Doris the door I'm going to coat Doris the door up and give me first initial thoughts on what this is brush what this brush is like because as I've said times many I like to try things that are new to me and I've never tried them before and give me initial first thoughts because if you're trying a paint for the first time those first initial thoughts are the thoughts that are either going to make you go for it again or not use it again so I'm giving it a fair judgment I hope I'm hope I'm giving it a fair judgment on what I think from my first initial thoughts now the last video I did on the heritage I used um, Scuff-X 
video on that. It's a nice paint. It's a nice paint. Today I'm dropping down, I don't want to say quality of paint, but the expense of the paint. Well, I'm going for MSP. Now MSP is what, I don't know, 30, 40 quid a, a two and a half litre tin. MSP is multi-surface paint, goes over virtually anything. And there's a video there, and I'm going to say watch that, because that's where I test out some paints on a UPVC door panel. If you've not seen it, it was probably done last year. It's still one of my best viewed videos for how the scratch test was with its results. It is cracking paint. So just give us a couple of minutes. I'll tip some paint out into a paint kettle. We'll coat up Doris the door and we'll see what these um, brushes are actually like to handle by a pro. Phil Beckwith. With the telly I've been to college. Advanced Craft City and Guilds. My results were quite good as well. Right, that's um, got me got my paint kettle out. I've told you about paint kettles. We've got multiple paint kettles. We use them, let them dry off, come back, and then over a period of time we burn them out and clean them all out. So don't go, ah, you've got a dirty paint kettle. If you're a pro, you've got paint kettles like this. I would say you'd probably not so much a pro if you've got a clean paint kettle, because obviously you've got time to clean them out. Right, let's just give you the bit of the bump for the bristle, uh, the brush, right. Um, Brilliant finish brushes. Brilliant finish brushes are made with a blend of uh, polyester filament. Oh God, polyester! Hot like pajamas. Um, filaments and uh, feature a firm flex. We love a firm flex, don't we? Can you remember the Green Goddess on um, Breakfast Telly? God, she was a firm flex, wasn't she? Or Mr. Motivator, some preferred Mr. Motivator. Right, the entry, the entry level professional brush. How can you have an? How can you have an entry level professional brush? That's like saying the professional amateur, isn't it? Let me get back to reading it. The entry level professional brush is extremely versatile. Oh, we love something versatile. It's paint. Pick up and release is exceptional and in conjunction with its firm flex this paintbrush is well suited to today's heavy bodied paints. Does that mean we can use it with oil based? Bet we can. Right, high paint pick up and release, good. Superior coverage, that's good, it means the paint that it puts on is spreading it out nice and not going to be I would say about cheaper brushes seem to be very scratchy and don't seem to release the paint and give a nice finish. Um, smooth, no streak finish, good, firm, steady hand control. Well, that depends whether you've had a drink the night before or some of you like to have a drink in the day. You know that mess, that denatured alcohol? I know some people like it out the cold cabinet. They don't like it warm out the van. Uh, and it just says versatile. So let's, let's give it a go. I've done my Jack and Ori reading for the day. Right, again, working out one side of the kettle. First initial thoughts of paint pickup in the kettle actually feels quite nice. Yeah. Right, I'm not going to tell you how to paint a door. If you want to know how to paint a door, video there. Do you know what? Because, <clears throat> excuse me, we're um, discussing this as I do it. I love the feel of that handle, and bristle-wise, I think that feels nicer than the heritage. I don't know what the different makeup of the bristle is. The handle's really nice, I think, because it's a little bit shorter, but also it's not slipping about in my hand. Now don't forget this is um, Bedeck MSP, it's going over that darker Helmi undercoat, I'm not expecting it to cover but it will actually give me a good idea of how the paint's being released out the brush and so far I will say so far so good.
That's really hard. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to swap across to that heritage on that next panel. I want to see how that compares up against it. Because this, that, oh, I've got paint all over me, flipping heck. I'm going to try this brush out just next to it. It's nice for having a bit longer bristle. You feel you can just jam it into corners nicely. Just getting the paint on. Put enough on that you can spread it all about. Lay it off with the tips of the bristles, then just feather out and lay off the mouldings. Take off the fatty edges. Ooh. Don't know how to call it. That, probably a bit better quality bristle, has put the paint on better. I'll try and bring you in, hold on. Again, you've got to trust me on this. <coughs> People who know about Nor brushes, that's, that is a better quality bristle, isn't it? Yeah. That has put the paint on a lot better than the entry level. But saying that, the entry level felt really nice. Now, is it a bit psychosomatic with this? Because that handle felt better, does that mean it felt better to put the paint on? I, th I think that's probably what the deal is. Let me go back to the brush that we're trying to test. Let's go down the middle, let's go down that middle rail. This feels a firmer bristle because it's a little bit shorter. That's why that feels nice. You feel you've got a good control over that. But, with it being shorter and that type of bristle, is it pulling off paint as much as it's putting on? Probably. Let's get you back out. I think that might be the case. Right, let me just go across the top. Is it like cutting in that? That's nice. That's nice for cutting in. Laying it off, tips of the bristles. Let's go back to that one again, go back to the heritage. Again. This can cut in nicely, the way the bristles, and you can remember I mentioned about there's no spragging bristles. That's really nice. That's that's the heritage. That's really nice. Going back to the, oh, call it the budget brush then. I 
I'll tell you what, that could just do with a bit longer handle. Feels a bit stumpy on the handle, but actual wood feels really nice. I'm going to finish off with the Heritage. This is the Heritage brush, just finishing off. So I'll bring you down a little bit. Very interesting to do the two brush comparison actually. When you're doing half a door, I'm just laying off with the tips again. I'm just going to go up the styles, finish off the styles, the lot rail, hinge rail edge with that brilliant. There we have it. The brilliant finish brush. I like the handle. I like the wood handle. It's actually nice to apply the paint. A crit the only crit it's not really going to be a criticism. It didn't seem to put the paint on as well as what the Heritage brush did. Now is that because the Heritage brush had got a better quality bristle in it quite possibly what was nice was having that little bit shorter length a little bit more control and looking how these are drying which is a good comparison because they are drying off now I've got blow heaters in my studio oh, studio sort of um, I can see how grinny and when I mean grinny I mean brush marky that is actually looking against that darker green base. What seems to have covered a bit better? I'd say the Heritage brush. But is there much in it? Not a lot. We know over these colours that I've been doing as a base colour, I'm three and sometimes four coats. I'm not expecting it covering for one. So if that's a nice brush and you can get on with that and I can apply the paint and get enough paint on, and it's a bit cheaper than that, would you go for that? Quite possibly. If you want a little bit better quality brush, you'd be going for that one. Now, a longer bristle is quite nice when it comes to water-based paints. If you've got oil-based paints, a shorter bristle is better. And you're going to go, what do you mean? I'm not going to say the word old school. If you've been used to over the years using a brush in oil based paints and you'd started off with a new brush, you were always cringing because you wanted to wear that brush down to get it a little bit more moulded to the way you paint. And normally it is making it a bit shorter. A shorter brush, not much in that, there's not a lot, a little bit of thickness different. A shorter brush does give you a little bit more control when you are working with oil based paints but we're testing this one out the brilliant finish one that's not bad at all do I like it as good as that one possibly I don't but if I had the both I wouldn't mind using either of them is that does it sound like I'm sitting on the fence but they're both really nice brushes I think it would come down to the application of the paints you're using on the substrates. These will all work with oil based, they'll all work with water based and they'll all be used for emulsions or finished woodwork paints. I think if you were going to have some brushes you would have both of these in your kit bag because both of these brushes are going to be useful to you whether it be this one that you just want to bang paint on and lay it off or whether you want this one as the heritage that you would probably say is a little bit more has a little bit more finesse. Does that make sense? A little bit more control and laying off. You might get a better finish. If you've got finished water-based paints that want a nice layoff, you'll go for that with a longer bristle. 
the length out. I'm on about the longer bristle, it's the length out. The length out shorter on that and also filament wise it's a little bit, can you see that? A little bit thinner, not, not by a lot. But on the whole, I'm impressed with that and I'm also, now I've gone back to using that, I can appreciate how good a brush that is and that's the Heritage Nor Heritage. Good brushes. Why haven't we seen these in the UK before? Give us some comments. Got some videos at the side. Can you click and um, watch those please? But, there we are. Heritage. And brilliant finish. Both nice brushes. That'll be the one you want to be going for if you're finishing off. That'll be the one that you want to bang paint out. You might find that, some videos there, you might find that is better for cutting in for emulsion. That might be where that's coming into its own emulsion paint. Both trying alright. Videos there, videos. Some videos.